Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a TypeScript app using Webpack. So as a demonstration, if we run this program with npm start, what we get is this simple application here that uses TypeScript. And when we click this button, we get a icon that appears, which is my Chrome extension icon, Wet Scepter. And so of course we can get live code updates. So say we have this right here, add Whip Scepter, hello, how are you, or something like that. If we re reopen this, we can see it being reflected right here. Um, another thing we can do is if we run npm run build, we get an actual output right here of our disk folder containing an HTML file to serve up our bundle. You can see it imported right here. And then here's our bundled code, which has been gone from TypeScript to JavaScript. So this is what we're gonna be building. So to begin, we just have an empty project or an empty directory. And let's initialize this as an npm project running npm init es6-y. This creates a package.json file with our type set to module, so we can use some more modern import syntax. Now let's install both our Webpack, Webpack CLI, and also TypeScript as development dependencies. And now for Webpack to handle TypeScript code, we need to install a TypeScript loader. And a Webpack loader is a function that transforms source code. A TypeScript loader transforms TypeScript to JavaScript. The loader we're gonna use for this is from NPM, and it's called TS Loader. So this TS Loader uses TSC, or the TypeScript compiler, and relies on a tsconfig.json file, or a TypeScript configuration file, which we'll create in a bit. Next, we're gonna install a Webpack plugin called the HTML Webpack plugin. And so basically a plugin is a feature of Webpack that allows us to access or plug into Webpack's lifecycle. The HTML Webpack plugin allows us to create an HTML file to serve the bundle that we created. So our HTML file, JavaScript, things like that. But now let's start to configure TypeScript. And to do this, we're gonna create our tsconfig.json or our TypeScript configuration file. And we can do this easily by running tps or mpx tsc dash dash init. And this creates our tsconfig.json file. And specifically, it fills it with a lot of values, some of which are by default enabled. We have target right here, which specifies the JavaScript version the code is transpiled into. We have it set to ES 2016, as modern browsers support mostly all of these features. Then if we scroll down, we have module, which sets the module system for the project. And as we specified this project in, pass in our packs.json as the type is module, we want to change this to be, let's change it to ES 6. And also just to keep things consistent, let's change this to ES 6 as well. If we go down more, we have the key strict right here, which enables stricter TypeScript checking or stricter TypeScript type checking behavior. We then have ES module interop, which assists with importing common JS modules into an ES6 code base. We have skip lib, lib check at the bottom here, which skips the type checking for declaration files. And then we had one more that we missed right here, which is force consistent casing and file names, which basically makes makes it so TypeScript will throw an error if a program imports a file with different casing than in the file system. We should also set the output directory right here, out there. We're gonna set that to be dist. So our compiled JavaScript files will be placed inside a folder called dist. Another useful option that we wanna set is source map to true. So right here, if we uncomment this line, setting this to true will make TypeScript emit source maps for each emitted JavaScript file. And source maps are useful for debugging as they allow browsers to reconstruct the original code. Now let's add some top level attributes. So we're gonna place these at the top level right here. And these are include and also exclude. So the include key specifies an array of file names or patterns to include in the program. And the exclude key specifies an array of file names or patterns that should be skipped when resolving include. And we want to exclude any node modules and dist folders. But now that we've done this, let's create our webpack configuration file. So it's gonna be webpack.config.cjs because we're gonna be using common JS syntax, which is essentially module.exports and require. So I'm gonna paste, paste in this configuration. And essentially what we're doing here is we're telling webpack to bundle the application for development in a browser environment by setting target to web, that the entry will start in a index.ts file inside a source folder. Let's create this right, right now. So we have our source directory and an index.ts file. And now back to our webpack config. 
We're also saying we want to output our bundled code to a folder called dist, and we'll call it bundle.js. And now let's inform Webpack that for every file ending in .ts, in a .ts extension, we want to run it through our ts loader. And we can do that with this module key. And now another thing we need to mention is our source maps. And so remember how the ts loader uses our tsconfig.json file um, for configuration? Well, inside here, we set source map equal to true. And to get Webpack to include these source maps in the bundle, we need to set the dev tool option. And we can do that. Let's place it right above here. And we're gonna set dev tool to inline source map. This dev tool option basically configures how source maps are generated. And now another useful Webpack configuration is to tell Webpack what extensions to resolve. And we can do that with the resolve and extensions keys. And we want Webpack to resolve TS and JS files. And essentially this means we can leave off extensions when importing files. And finally, let's just inform Webpack about the HTML Webpack plugin. So what we're gonna do is just import that at the top level here. And then we're gonna instantiate a HTML Webpack object with our plugins key. So this will essentially generate our HTML file and include our bundle in it. So we've got this basically set up. Now we just need to add a server to serve up the application. And for this, we're gonna use Webpack Dev Server. So we can install this with MPMI Webpack Dev Server, and we'll install it as a development dependency. And we can configure this server inside our Webpack configuration file. And I'm gonna put it right here. And what we're gonna have it do is serve up static content from our dist folder, which is of course where we output everything to. And we're also gonna have it listen on port 444. But that's basically all we need to get started. Now let's just have our Let's just write some TypeScript code. So I'm gonna have a file. Actually, I'm gonna create a second one so we can just show some imports. It's gonna be called witscepter.ts, which is the name of my Chrome extension, if you wanna go check it out in the Chrome store. And essentially what we have in here is we just create an image tag, we set the image source, and then we append the image to the document body. And this image, I believe, is an image of my Chrome extension, which we'll see when we run this code. But now let's import this into our index file. And this should get rid of this error in our tsconfig.json as well. Or maybe not, let's see what it's saying here. I just need to refresh the TypeScript server. There we go, okay. So looks good now. So we import this function as create wit code from our witscepter.ts file. We can leave off the extension because in Webpack we have resolve down here. But essentially we're gonna add a button, add text to it, and whenever we click it, it's gonna add this image. So all we need to do now is create a script to run this application. And so we're gonna do this, of course, inside package.json. And in scripts, for start, we're gonna have webpack serve, and then we're gonna supply our configuration. And what this will do is open a new window, or browser window, and serve up the static files on port 444 with our webpack dev server. So all we need to do is run npm start, and it, and it actually opened up on a different window but we can see it here. If we just keep clicking Add Wit Scepter, we can see my Chrome extension logo just appearing. And so note that after we run this command, we can't actually see our dist folder anywhere here. And this is because the Webpack dev server holds it in memory just to make things quicker. But let's also create a build script. So we have our start script. Let's create a build one to demonstrate actually outputting our bundle. And so what we're gonna do is just run npm run build and now we can see our dist folder right here, and it contains our index.html file and our bundle, and we can see our bundle right here. But so this is how you can create a TypeScript app using Webpack. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments, and I'll try and get back to you. Besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.